Hey teachers, this is Lance, and we're getting ready to start back to school. Google's got some great new tools that's coming out for us. Uh, so I'm a certified innovator, certified trainer. I uh, work for the Putnam County School System. We've got some great tools that we want to introduce to you. So I'm going to jump in and show those to you today. So this is called Google Class Tools. So first off, I've got my teacher Chromebook that you see that I'm on here. A couple of caveats to this. First, you do have to be on Plus. These Chromebooks do have to be on 137. So that's Chrome OS 137. Uh, if they're on Chrome OS 137, you will notice this uh, little purple icon that's sitting down here, and this is called Class Tools. So this is my teacher device right now. I'm gonna go ahead and open Class Tools up. Uh, and once I get there, you're gonna see, do I wanna start a session because I am the teacher. The students click on this, they're gonna get a different look than this. So when you click on students, it's gonna ask you to select your students, okay? So this is tied to your Google Classroom. There's another way you can do it by joining it with a code. Uh, but for right now, we're just gonna hit add students right here. And what you'll see is all my Google Classrooms will pop up here. So I'm gonna use my test environment, my class tools test environment right here. And I can either select all my students or select them individually. I'm just gonna go ahead and hit add students and then i'll have my students that'll pop up right there okay now this is just setting it up so i'm going to back out of this one time here and now we're going to go to resources before i do that i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to open up chrome and i'm going to open up a few tabs that i might want to use in class today so i'm going to open up kira learning here and i am going to open up youtube and last, I'm going to open up Canvas because we use Canvas sometimes in our district. So I've got these three tabs open and maybe there's a specific YouTube video that I want them to use. So we're just going to type in con and systems of equations here. Okay, so I've got those queued up. Evidently, I didn't press enter on the Kira Learning. To get that to the dashboard. So I've got all three of those tabs now queued up. Now, when I go to resources, so first off, let me say, Google doesn't mean this as a punitive device. This is merely a class teaching tool. So uh, this isn't gonna be something you can see all the student screens at all times, but if you wanna display one student screen to show their excellent work, you can do that there. Okay, so when I go to resources, as you see right now, I don't have any resources showing. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to click on add resources and then I get options. Okay, do I wanna uh, use Google Classroom? Do I have an assignment already created that I wanna pull in for the students to be able to use? Do I want to open tabs for them? So I've gotta have the tabs open in my browser. That's one reason that I pulled that up right there. Uh, I, and then I've got links. So I'm gonna go Google Classroom first because I've got some things set up there. And you can see this is my systems module that I've got. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab that. I'm gonna hit add assignment right there. And now I've got, a, um, I've got a resource that I can share with my students. Then I'm gonna hit add resource again because I can do the same thing with open tabs. You can see it's gonna pull in the three tabs that I've got uh, pulled up, so I'm going to click all of those because I want students to be able to go to all of those. And then if I wanted to just add a link, so maybe I don't have it pulled up, but I know that I'm going to need them to go and do some research today for systems of equations, so maybe uh, we're going to go to ESPN.com and then I can hit add link right there. So now I've got multiple different resources that's there. Now, this isn't where you want to stop on the resources, though. There is a cog wheel that is on the resources. So I can click right here on the cog wheel, and this gives me levels of navigation for my students. The top one uh, being the most restrictive. That means that it only lets them go to that one page. If there's links on the page, they click on those links, it's not going to go to any of those links. Okay, uh, but you may need them to link out to a couple other things in that website. So it's looking at the domain name on that. So for this, I'm gonna leave this as most restrictive because I'm gonna leave them inside of that. Uh, same thing with Kira Learning. Uh, I'm gonna leave that as most restrictive because you know there might be uh, some things that, you know, like maybe a Facebook or a X or something like that that's on the page. Uh, YouTube definitely gonna do most restrictive. That way they can only 
access um, that one video that I made. Now with Canvas, I'm going to change this to all pages or all pages in the website because they're going to need to click on links and go to different modules and different things inside of there. So I'm okay with that. And then the last one, this ESPN, uh, I'm going to do all navigation for this one just so we can see the differences and what happens here. So they'll be able to click on links. They're going to be able to get stuff that I probably don't want to get to, but just so you can see the different levels here. All right, so I'm going to click the tab back right here. Captions and translations will come back to you in a few minutes once I have this up and working for students. And then I'm going to hit the next button right here. And this is where I'm ready to start my class. So Google is going to ask you, how long do you want this class to be? So generally it will default to 60 minutes. So we'll go ahead and just hit 60 minutes here. Uh, this toggle right here, only class tools. This will actually lock out uh, everything else. So they won't have uh, extensions. They won't have their clock, they want to have that all apps button. So this is going to lock out a lot of the things that you don't want them to get to. Uh, so you can turn that on or off. We're going to turn it on for right now, uh, just so you can see what happens. Uh, and then uh, I'll hit start session. Before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and flip to the student's Chromebook screen. So the teacher's Chromebook screen has a pink background. Uh, the uh, student uh, Chromebook screen has a blue background. So I'm going to switch right quick. Now that I'm on my student screen, I'm going to hit start session uh, from my teacher screen and let's watch and see what happens. So I hit start and then we should see, oh, we got a pop up on the Chromebook. We've got all these tabs start opening and then now their clock and their menu bar is going away. All right. So here at the bottom, you can see now I can scroll down here, but nothing is happening. So the students have a few options from here. They've got where their dock can go. So here's a little dock right here. So it can go left. It can go right, right there. If their tabs are not showing, they can click this button here to make the tabs show or to make them go away. Or they've got access to all these tabs right inside of here. They've also got a little menu button here in case that they need to give permissions to their microphone, camera, any of that. Okay, so the tabs went away. If I want to make them stick, I can click on that and it'll make them stick. So we'll go to our assignment details right here and we'll see that the students have access to a few different things right here that I've given them. So they can click on this video right here. And as you can see, I've got it restricted down. So I get, oh, you can't get to this because your teacher has restricted it. So obviously here in Google Classroom, I would want to go make a setting change on that. Now the PDF, it is going to load, but the video wouldn't. So that's something that we would need to, to fix. All right, so next we're gonna go over to uh, the Canvas page here. So we see on Canvas, there is an X and a Facebook link right there. If I click on Facebook, it says, oh, this has been disabled as well. But a student can go up here and click on to courses, all courses right here. And then it will take them to the all courses page or if they want to click on their profile page they can click on the profile page and they can get to different pages within inside of canvas because i said anything inside of this will work and then last if they go to espn and they click on different links here so if we go to pga tour live that will work and as you can see, this is linking out to some other things here. And because I've got this turned on, uh, they can link out to different things. So um, this is a setting that you're going to want to play with and you're going to want to look at. All right, so we're going to go back to our Google Classroom screen. I'm going to go back to my teacher screen just for a second. So on the teacher screen, if I click this class tools only button, that's the one that we set with that toggle earlier. If I click it here, you will see that the student screen now, they've got their all apps button and their clock button and all that back and they can open up different things. So that's gonna be a decision up for you. Do you want those class tools on or off? So next, the pause devices. So let's say that you're teaching and you need the students not to be working on the Chromebooks. So I'm gonna switch back to the student screen. Now on the teacher screen, I'm gonna hit pause device and you're gonna see the student has got a, a pop-up that comes up. It says your teacher has paused your device. They're not going to be able to do anything. They're not going to be able to click on anything until you say that it's okay. So I'll hit unpause here, and then you'll see on the student's device, 
now they can go back to working. So again, this is something that you can use uh, as a teaching tool for your students. Okay, now let's go back to the student or the teacher side. Here, uh, we can see there's 55 minutes left in the class. If I need to add extra time, I can click on the add button. I can add extra time. I can end the session right now if I need to. Uh, but let's say that the students go to the next class and there's still time on there. Uh, their teacher, when they get to that class, just in case you've got things locked out, they will be able to start a session and their session they start will override your session. Because we have heard uh, people talk about, you know, things uh, you know, somebody starts a session before they get to the next class and they're locked out and they have to contact the teacher or figure out who the teacher was. Uh, so you will be able to override that. The next thing I want to talk about now that we've got a session going is captions and live translations. This is one of the coolest features that I've seen that Google's come out with. So first off on my screen, I'm going to go ahead and turn this on and you're going to see captions pop up here on the screen. So students, if I have this hooked to an interactive flat panel or a projector, something like that, students will be able to see my um, transcript, uh, my captions live right here on the screen. Okay, but then there's another button right below that that says allow students to use captions. So I'm gonna go ahead and toggle that on from my teacher side. And then I'm gonna flip back to the student side and automatically you'll see that it pops up and the students can see captions right there. Now, let's say the students don't want to see the captions. There is a button right here that the students can click and now their captions will be gone because maybe they don't need to see those, but maybe they do need to see those so they can click it back on and then they can see their students or their teachers captions again. Now there is a button that's in here, this little arrow up, arrow down, it will default to this size once your students are in there. But if they need a longer uh, captions, they can just come in here and they can click on that. And then they will be able to see the captions there. Okay, but wait, there's one more setting. So I'm gonna flip back to the teacher side. And then there is a allow students to translate. So I'm gonna click on that button to allow the students to translate. Oh, sorry. This one right here, allow students to translate. And now we'll flip back to the student side. Now I've already got this set to Spanish. So you can see that this student is getting uh, the translations here in Spanish. Okay, but if you have students who speak other languages, so you got multiple languages going on in one classroom, let's just say you've got uh, another student who speaks French, they can click on the French button here and then everything will be translated for that student in French. So you can have multiple languages going on in one classroom and it will be translating whatever language that student needs. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna set this back to Spanish. So I'll just have to scroll. You can see there's many, many languages here. So I can select that and put that back to Spanish and now they'll be getting that translation. So I'm gonna flip back to the teacher screen and I'm going to cut those off right there. So now the student's not getting the translations, they're not getting the captions, but it's still on my screen. And then the last, I can click this button and then I can cut the translations off on my screen as I need to as well. All right, let's say that we have a student who is doing exemplary work and we want to display this to the whole class. The way that you do that is you go up to the student screen while our session is live and you will see that we have a little view screen button that's going to be there uh, on the uh, teacher dashboard. So I'm going to cut back to the student dashboard so you can see what's happening when I click this button. So when I click this button, the student is going to get a pop up on their screen that says, hey, your teacher is going to view your screen in a couple of seconds. And now I'll flip back to the teacher screen. So they get a warning and they have a little message down here that Lance Key is viewing your screen. So now on the teacher side, when I'm looking at this, I can see first off whose screen that I'm viewing, but then also what they're doing. So if we're just trying to show their different tabs and what's going on, we can then show that because maybe they're doing some exemplary work and we want to show that to the whole classroom. 
Again, this is meant for a teaching tool and not a punitive tool. So we'll click that button and then it closes it out right there and then we're no longer sharing their screen. Last thing I'll show you today uh, and then we'll end this video is if you have kids that are not in your Google Classroom uh, that you want to use these same features with. Now this will not work with teachers as of right now because we have to list who's, our, who's teachers and who's students. Uh, so if you want students to join that's not in one of your Google Classrooms, uh, then this is the quick way to do it. There is a join code that's right here. You can copy that. That way you can email it to people or you can put a pop-up on your screen so it's really big so they can just see that to join uh, your session. So anyways, uh, hopefully this was helpful for you today. Uh, I'm Lance Key, one of your Google Certified Innovators, one of your Google Certified Trainers. Really excited about this Google Class Tools uh, that you can use uh, inside of your classroom uh, to help you teach your classes.